Welcome to the Abundant Talk Show, where we are inspiring you to tap into your power to manifest the happiness, success, and fulfillment that you desire. I am your host, Niaje, the Upper Limit Coach. I am here to dismantle your limiting beliefs and remove the blocks so you can confidently live your life's purpose, because life is meant to be abundant. Hey, Abundance, thank you for watching or listening to the Abundant Talk Podcast. I am joined by the beautiful Natalia Rising, and I am going to let her explain what it is that she does. But before we get into that, I want to ask you, what does abundance mean to you? Yes, um, I love this question. And for me personally, abundance means remembering that I am capable, mm -hmm. that I'm resourceful, and that I'm connected. Yes, I love it. I love it. So tell us what you do. Yeah. So um, I'm a certified relationship sexuality and life coach. And um, I help women that are already powerful women and created a beautiful life mm -hmm. to feel sexy and desirable inside. I love it. I love it. I feel like there's a lot of women that are very timid in their sexuality. Do you find that a lot with your clients? Yes. I find that in, for my clients, like they are these bombshell, powerful women that look it and they've created amazing life. Mm -hmm. um, but inside, they don't necessarily feel that mm. in relationships or sexuality, mm. even if they look at to everyone else. Wow. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Um, yeah, that's um, that's a beautiful, deep question. <laughs> <laughs> we like to dive deep here. Yes. We like to dive deep. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yes, lots of reasons, right? Like for one, for example, is adversity and trauma, right? Mm. Um, a lot of us became strong and powerful by overcoming mm -hmm. challenges in our life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we also learned to, to manage and control um, sometimes you know, our circumstances and shape our reality, mm -hmm. um, but also kind of like almost over-focusing mm -hmm. on external and others. Mm -hmm. um, and feeling sexy and desirable inside and lovable inside, it's more about, it's less about doing and more about being mm. and more about feeling and authentically expressing rather than performing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not about not doing all those things because um, women like that, they've created amazing life, they've achieved. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't want them to not do that, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's amazing and they can keep their high standards. Um, but it's more about also, you know, um, taking that pressure off themselves, like in relationships and in sexuality and in that area of their life to performing less, but feeling and being and expressing more. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, in a nutshell. Yeah, so I think that one of the problems that I've seen with like bombshell or like powerhouse women is they've adapted a masculine energy. Yes. So do you work with them on like finding that power in their femininity? Absolutely, um, that's one beautiful aspect of it, and um, and also to to say to normalize that mm -hmm. that um, in our world in our society the masculine energy is absolutely um, kind of held above, mm -hmm. not kind of, it absolutely held above mm -hmm. to the extent that oftentimes feminine energy is held in contempt. Mm -hmm. um, we might glorify it, but at the same time, like um, you know, performance and doing and achieving is kind of held more of a, like, this is good, and feeling, and I mean, nobody, you don't get in the social media, well, unless you're me and you have a lot of um, other friends that are doing this kind of line of work, <laughs> nobody shares, like, oh, I took this morning off, and I rested, and I processed some grief and trauma that was coming up, mm -hmm. and I really felt my feelings, like, nobody brags that. That's kind of considered like, keep that hidden, keep that, you know, like, that's your own problem, like, that's a problem. Yeah. Where in reality, um, if you're not feeling, if you're not even resting, even as a high-performing athlete, if you're not resting, you're not going to 
get what you want, you're not going to win those competitions. Yeah. You need to do both, um, but at the same time, like we are not as um, forthcoming about like this is so important. This is just as equally important. Um, you can train, but you need to rest. Mm -hmm. If you don't rest, you're going to destroy your body. Yeah. So um, yeah, so it's more about coming into balance. Mm -hmm. And for these women, if we're talking back to our conversation. They, they are out of balance in a sense that they almost need to be forced to feel. They need to be almost forced to, um, to feel pleasure. They need to be held accountable to focus on pleasure because for them, you know, the way they got to their success was like, put your needs last or don't even like, what is, I don't have any needs. Yeah and uh, don't feel pleasure, pleasure is bad, like achieve, perform. Um, that's why like, they might look also beautiful on the outside because they've done everything to, you know, they've gone to the gym, they've done their hair, they've done their makeup, they're wearing beautiful put together outfit, but they haven't, it's not a feeling beautiful for them because it's um, a number of tasks so to bring the balance, to feel beautiful, like you really have to take time and you have to take focus and just make it a priority. Mm -hmm. Like what makes me feel beautiful? Mm -hmm. And then you can like fully own that and you can fully radiate that to, to the outside world. And, and the outside world will also reflect it back to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love it. I think that self-care and self-love is like non-negotiable. Like you have to check in and just like you said on social media, I do think that we're in a society where everyone has to put forth their highlight reel, but they don't talk about the days when they have fears or doubts or worries or, you know, like I need to check in. I need some me time. It's always like you have to be on all the time with social media, but Absolutely. it's really important to find that balance, to check in, to make sure that you are taking care of the inside just as much as the outside. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So let's dive into attachment styles. So we had a conversation about attachment styles and I am obsessed with attachment styles right now. So I read the book Attached and it is basically talking about relationships, but attachment styles is something that's really, really powerful for people to understand because it can help you understand how to deal with people and why people are the way that they are and the different patterns that we have that typically are stemming from childhood. And so I'll, I'll let you explain how you define attachment styles for someone who's not familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, first of all, I want to say that attachment theory is one of the most researched um, fields in psychology. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not something new. It's not a fad by no means. Mm -hmm. um, for example, my mentor, my teacher, Diane Paul Heller, mm -hmm. she's been an expert and um, in the field for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. So just to put it in perspective, like this is science and it's, you know, it's been around forever and it's here to stay. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so yes, the attachment style is a beautiful lens to understanding ourselves and others. And, um, and for me, like why do we want to study it? is because it creates enormous amount of freedom mm -hmm. in our relationships and basically in every area of our life. Mm -hmm. And it puts us in a driver's seat. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like everything that provides that for me, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so I know that you said you, you basically refer to two different attachment styles, so secure and insecure. But I know in the book, they, they have secure, anxious, and avoidant. Yes. Um, but I, I believe Diane goes into disorganized as yes. well. Yes. So, so give us a little breakdown of yeah. like how you see secure and insecure. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I like to simplify everything. So um, there are four attachment style. Um, Diane does talk about disorganized. It's the least talked about style. Mm -hmm. um, there is some estimates that it's only about 5% of people have it. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and it is the most difficult to work with, so people don't like to, to talk about it as much. Mm -hmm. 
um, the, the holy grail of attachment, they say, is secure attachment. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, they say about 50% of people have it. Um, and I find that really hard to believe, honestly. <laughs> I, I feel like there's yeah. more like anxious people in this world today. But we present ourselves to be like that secure attachment style. But I think, but, but you said something about patterns. So, okay, I'll let you finish. And okay. So, like, I, I get excited. I get excited. I know. So. I, know. I love this topic. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay. So, so secure is the holy grail. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is what we all want. Mm -hmm. And for some people, they feel like, oh, my God, like, I'll never have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, basically, like, I like, I like to tell stories. Um, so to tell a story about secure attachment, what is it, right? Um, just imagine you're traveling and your plane gets diverted mm -hmm. to a city that you were not planning to step over. Mm -hmm. And it's like kind of nighttime and, um, and you land there and you're like, oh, what am I going to do? And you realize you have a really dear friend living close to the airport. Mm -hmm. And you try to call, they don't respond, but you like, oh, like, they will be fine with me. Like we have that deep and close of a relationship that um, they would be okay with me stopping over. Mm -hmm. So you drive to their house, you ring the doorbell, they open the door, and they have the biggest smile. I mean, of course, they're surprised, mm -hmm. and it's like nighttime, but they're so happy to see you. Like, they're absolutely like, you're not like, what are you doing here? Like, they're like, you're welcome, you're embraced, you're loved, and you know that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know that they, you know, they just, like they get you mm -hmm. and um so like i love that because basically it's you know if you're in that situation like you would recognize that yeah um it's this feeling of getting gotten mm -hmm. and um like deeply regarded mm -hmm. and like they have your back um and basically you know you feel relaxed there is a level of trust mm -hmm. there is probably a level of playfulness mm -hmm. um and it's kind of also like if you you know how they talk about root and wings um, roots and wings, so like you, um, okay, so like for, <laughs> oh my god, so um, anyway, so like it, it kind of gives you a base to, from where, you know, like you know this person really gets you, mm -hmm. so like if, if you have challenge, that's fine, if you have successes, like you are not afraid to like not share with them because they like scorn you or like be jealous, yeah, um, yeah. so like we all want that, yeah. right, and yes. we all benefit tremendously from that. Mm -hmm. And so this is like secure relating or, um, and, and, and so like um, anxious and avoidance styles, I like I lump them kind of like in insecure style or mm -hmm. these are ways of insecure relating. Mm -hmm. um, there is a little bit of different reasons why people become anxiously attached mm -hmm. or avoidantly attached. Um, sometimes they actually exhibit like same behaviors mm -hmm. um, like for example have you ever um, you know like seen somebody I mean probably more like a child but um, you know just kind of like walk off and like you know go to their room mm -hmm. and maybe they are just kind of looking for some space you know just wanting to distance themselves mm -hmm. um, or maybe they're just kind of like making a scene so hoping you would come and yeah. you know kind of get them mm -hmm. so it's kind of like protest behavior mm -hmm. so that's basically the difference between avoidant style and anxiously attached style yeah um, so the challenges in childhood or sometimes as grown-ups we experience challenging and we develop more avoidant style mm -hmm. or more anxious style mm -hmm. is um, a little bit different um, so People with avoidance style, they might have, you know, when they were children, their family might have been going through, um, you know, grief or challenges, or maybe a parent was depressed, or maybe parents just had several children, and they were so busy that the child, you know, didn't, like, feel like they were getting their needs con consistently met. Mm -hmm. um, that is possible. So it's not always, like, it's not about blame, right? It's not always that parents were, like, bad parents or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, you know, it's a way to adapt um, the child, you know, as, as they grow, also they kind of become like super reliant on themselves mm -hmm. and kind of like, oh, like I don't need anyone, I can do everything uh, like myself. Mm -hmm. 
And, um, and honestly, like our society and our culture absolutely glorifies, mm -hmm. um, glorifies kind of like avoidance style of relating. Yeah. You know, and it's really like we are not necessarily um, as a society, like a relationship oriented, um, you know, society. Um, so it's, yeah, like, like we were talking about that, it, you know, performance is kind of more glorified and avoidant people, and, and there's a range also, it's kind of on a spectrum, um, but people that, you know, are on avoidance side, they do tend to perform really well and, you know, they're high achievers and it does work, that's why people kind of adapt to that style, um, where they're lacking is they kind of like more isolated mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily have that, you know, secure base. Yeah. Um, so they, they're, they're not, they may be craving connection mm -hmm. deep inside, but they might not even allow themselves to kind of feel that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So while um, anxiously attached people, they're also like, it's also insecure style of relating. Um, but they're super aware that they need connection. They're like, give me, give me, give me, give me. And um, the sad thing is that no matter how much attention they're getting, like they can't let it in. Mm. So they're so focused on give me attention, but they can't actually trust it. They can't like deeply feel connected. Mm. Um, and so they're not necessarily enjoying the same benefits um, even if they have a connection, even with a secure partner that is absolutely trying to provide that for them, mm -hmm. um, they're not necessarily, you know, getting the benefit, like, in the moment. Mm -hmm. and, um, and as we, we talked earlier, like, these um, styles, or I like to say patterns, mm -hmm. because um, a lot of us do have kind of a combination of these, or sometimes we can um, be triggered by a certain person to mm -hmm. respond in a certain pattern or um, a situation as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, but these things are dynamic and malleable. Mm -hmm. So over time, we actually can become more secure if we are in a secure functioning relationship mm -hmm. or um, we could um, also become less secure. Mm -hmm. Like if we are with an extremely avoidant person, uh, even if we were secure as children, and you know we can become less secure, so um, it is something to watch out for and to like be aware of, and that we are, you know, we are vulnerable as humans and we do um, affect each other big mm -hmm. time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So just to kind of like chunk it down a little bit, the way I understand avoidant is the person who is like I don't need a relationship like I need to focus on my career I need to focus on my business I need to focus on my life and they don't necessarily make a lot of space for relationships in their life so typically that's someone who didn't receive the support or the love they needed in their childhood uh, basically right yeah, for, for, for various the most reasons. Part. Or, yeah. it, or it could have happened. It could have happened at different points in their life. A, a relationship could have triggered it. But like you said, I do think our society glorifies that because we're so like business and career driven, especially these days. Everyone's an entrepreneur. Everyone, you know, is a business owner. Everyone has like different side hustles. So it's almost okay to feel like I don't need a relationship, but. I do feel like it's suppressing the need for a relationship because we all need companionship. So I think that... I like to say we are wired for connection. Yes, we're wired for connection. <laughs> I like that. I like yeah. that a lot. Yeah. And yeah. so with anxious, the way I see it, and this is just like how I, how I chunk it down in my head, but with anxious, it, most, sometimes, I, I don't want to say most of the time, but sometimes it was that over overbearing parent that just like provided everything for the child and the child didn't have to do anything themselves like the the parents provided everything like probably smothered them so they're used to constantly getting that attention and they take that into 
adulthood. I, I guess that's kind of how they broke it down in Attached. Mm -hmm. But those are the, in my opinion, like the codependent partners where they just like they have to be in a relationship. They need someone in their life. And even if they, like you said, even if they have someone, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're happy and fulfilled because they're, they're just so used to, I guess, needing someone. Does that make sense? They, um, it makes sense. They, they, like, they can't let it in. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one thing about anxious people is that they did get a lot of love, like you said, mm -hmm. um, but they didn't get it consistently. Mm -hmm. um, to where, you know, like parents are super, super loving and then, you know, maybe they traveled a lot or maybe there was a divorce mm -hmm. or maybe the parent just like didn't know how to set the boundaries. So they were giving, giving, giving and then they're like put up the wall mm -hmm. um, to where the child is like, oh, where is it now? Mm -hmm. And they're confused and, um, and it's almost like they become addicted to that trying to get attention. Mm -hmm. So they're constantly trying to get attention, but they can't let it in to where they really feel it, mm -hmm. and they're really nourished by it, mm -hmm. and they're really like rest in it. Mm -hmm. So that's um, obviously it's kind of like you do feel a lot of pain in that situation. Mm -hmm. While if you're more like an avoidance spectrum, you're like, oh no, I'm great. Like I don't need anyone. And um, and also like avoidant people. Like I love how you summarized it. But also, um, I love that to, to, to talk how um, avoidant people might have a lot of friends, mm -hmm. um, but their friendships are a little bit more like on a shallow side, mm -hmm. to where they might be like loved by everyone, and you know, and people think like, oh, look at all the love that they have in their life, um, and they might say like, oh, and I really want to have a romantic relationship, but like I haven't found the right person yet. Mm -hmm. Um, or like I had the perfect person, but I messed up and they got away and now I'll never, like I keep trying to find someone like that. So um, avoiding people do not have awareness that, um, I mean, I've met some really aware avoiding people, but as a rule, um, they are amazing. They know they're amazing. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> I think I honestly, like being really honest with myself, I think I'm an avoidant attachment style. Because I mean, I've been single forever, and but I want a relationship. But it's like Which no one's you ever. you could be secure but too. But no one's ever yeah. like right. So I'm like maybe yeah. maybe yeah. I'm an avoidant attachment style, but an aware one because I I know yeah. I know when people do come into my life, I tend to push them away because I'm like I have to focus on my business. <laughs> okay, so if you know that about yourself that yeah. you tend to push people away. I would yeah. say that it's very possible. Um, because like from the dating perspective, secure people also like they tend to, um, they can stay off, you know, like out of relationship for like longer periods of time mm -hmm. and be comfortable in that mm -hmm. because they're comfortable in relationship, they're comfortable without relationship, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, uh, and they do, you know, they might like get a lot of sense of connection from friendships and, um, you know, yeah, and have amazing friends. Yeah, so um, so there is that. Like, it's actually if you look at the dating scene, they say that um, the majority, especially as you get older, um, there is more and more avoidant people in the dating scene mm -hmm. um, because they, you know, like they they keep getting into the cycle of, um, you know, like kind of dismissing the partner and you know and right back in the dating pool mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, and the anxious people are constantly getting into relationships, so they're not necessarily in a dating pool long enough. Are you using crystals to accelerate your manifestation? Every month, Abundance Box is sending you new authentic crystals, therapeutic grade essential oils, and more goodies to help you cleanse energy, raise your vibrations, and tap into abundance, along with affirmations and a supportive community. For more information, go to AbundanceHack.com forward slash box. And remember, life is meant to be abundant. So how would I how would I clarify like if I had a spectrum of like okay this is secure and this is avoidant how do I know like which end of the spectrum I'm on? Yeah, yeah. So um, I mean there are tests that you could take, mm -hmm. um, but like like I said the interesting thing about it is that we do have patterns. Yeah. So understanding what secure is. And also, like, really learning about yourself, like, and, and just being curious. Um, if you're not curious and you think nothing's wrong with you, 
um, chances are you're an avoidant person. Not to. <laughs> well, I mean, I think, I yeah. think anyone who thinks that nothing is wrong with that <laughs> has some issues. <laughs> like, they don't have any self-awareness, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So, because no, one, no one's perfect. We all have stuff that yeah. we need to work through. Yeah. And heal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, usually people with anxious style, they're aware and they're, because they are in pain. And they're trying to, you know, figure things out, but they're not necessarily um, getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. They might be continuously getting in a relationship with, um, you know, avoidant people. Mm -hmm. Because these two tend to, um, like, match really well. Mm -hmm. Not in a sense that it's a satisfying relationship, but in a sense that there's a lot of, um, kind of, like, intensity. Yeah, that um, push and pull of... Yes, yeah, anxious is always chasing, like, pay me attention, pay me attention, love me, love me, and then the avoidant is always, like, kind of yeah. distant. So it, if, they're, if, the, if the anxious is used to just always searching for that love, they're always going to search for it because the avoidant is always going to withhold it, kind of. Yes, yes, because um, um, avoidant people... Okay, so one of the ways to test the relationship, like if you are, um, you know, like separating, not necessarily like you're breaking up, but even like if you're going out of town, um, if you are experiencing some anxiety around separating from that relationship, that's more like of an anxious mm -hmm. um, feature, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're experiencing relief, mm -hmm. um, because you're going to get some time to yourself, that's more kind of a little bit on a avoidance, avoidance side. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, and and it, the secure would know that space is healthy, right? Yes. Because like I do think that I think space is healthy. So like if if your partner, so there's a lot of couples that they they lose themselves in the relationship and they don't hold on to their identity. They don't hold on to their friends. They stop hanging out with their friends to only hang out with like mutual friends and stuff like that but I personally feel like it's really healthy for a couple to have you know separate friends separate hobbies where you have that space and you hold on to your identity and yeah secure relating so maybe I am <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> and like I said we all have different patterns and also we get triggered into different patterns by different people. Yeah. Um, but it's very good to have um, a lot of understanding around what secure functioning is. Mm -hmm. There is mutuality, there is, um, it's easier to express needs and ask for what you want. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, conflicts get repaired, uh, conflicts get solved and addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, because avoiding, it's more like, if there is a conflict, I just pay distance, like I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then you also uh, um, you also miss out on the intimacy mm -hmm. that gets created by working through these situations. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so in a secure relationship where people do have a lot of autonomy, but they also have a lot of interdependence, mm -hmm. these are relationships that would have high level of intimacy, but also high level of desire. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, like insecure relationship. Um, for example, anxious and avoidant person, they or like even anxious and anxious person. There could be like a lot of fireworks I flying. Feel, yeah, I feel like that would be a disaster. I mean, <laughs> I mean, maybe like they're they're both kind of needy, so I feel like on the surface, but like I feel like I feel like it'd be a disaster. Yeah, well, that is kinda, a I mean, that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I. Um, to experience the highest level of intimacy and the highest level of desire and the best, honestly, like one of the reasons, if, if that's the only reason that you will, you know, like work on becoming more secure or search out a secure relationship is um, one could argue that to like really enjoy the, the best sexuality, like you want to be a secure partner and you want to be um, in secure partnership. Because then people like come together to like actually share and express themselves, and they also are able to receive you as you are and to really see you. While um, you know, avoidant person, they're like, I need attention, but it's kind of like really stressful. So they're like one foot in, one foot out, and it's kind of like more relating on a shallow level, including um, in the bedroom, right? 
And, um, and if you're like on an anxious um, kind of um, spectrum, then for you, like you're not there to like fully, like, like you think you want to have like vibrant sexuality, but honestly, like you're kind of like meeting your childhood need for like, I need to hold on to you. Mm -hmm. um, but in reality, it kind of starts like squishing the desire because you are kind of, you're not relating as a mature, you know, mature, like emotionally mature grown up. Mm -hmm. Like you are still like, like, you know, <laughs> you're still gonna be independent. Yeah. You are, yeah, like you're feeding your insecurity. And um, yeah, so to like fully enjoy what relationships really do have to offer, um, you want to be in a secure relationship. Yeah. So, if someone is in an insecure relationship, or like, say they're anxious or avoidant, and, or their partner is anxious or avoidant, how can they work towards being more secure? Is that something that they need to do together? Or is it something you can like work on yourself and just bring your best self to the relationship? Like, what what would you recommend for like a client that came to you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, separate and together to me, it's like do it all. You know, if your partner is open mm -hmm. to working with you, that's beautiful. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. Then you can both work on yourselves and together. Mm -hmm. um, if you your partner for example, more like on avoidance side and you are like in pain and you're like researching, <laughs> but they haven't quite, um, you know, they haven't quite bought into that they have some patterns too that are yeah. problematic for relationship. You can start with working on yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, and and so, so practical tips for um, somebody with more like anxious style would be to work on their receiving and their capacity to actually take love in. Mm -hmm. um, and how, how personally I learned that I have a problem with receiving is I started noticing what I do with, when somebody compliments me. Mm -hmm. Is um, like, now if somebody compliments me, I would be like, oh my God, yes, I am beautiful, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Where in the past, I would be like, oh, like, is something wrong with me? Like, and oh. not able to, not able to trust the compliment, not able to really fully take it in, and um, and that's just like one aspect. But um, but like expanding their capacity to receive, mm -hmm. um, because you know like noticing what others actually do provide for you, mm -hmm. and just really you know learning about love languages, mm -hmm. right? Um, to where that's yeah, a I lot of love languages too. <laughs> <laughs> I love all of those types. Yeah, to where that could be like a misunderstanding too, but like really taking in, um, you know, like what what others provide for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's one, and, and also work on their self soothing, mm -hmm. uh, because these are the people that are so focused on like what is the another person doing. They are not really doing what they need to do for themselves. Mm -hmm to calm themselves down, to even know what are they feeling. Like like you were talking about people losing themselves in relationships. Mm -hmm. It's very easy for an anxious person because they're so focused on mm -hmm. another yeah. that they don't even know what they want. Yeah. They don't even know who they are. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that I mean, I don't I don't coach towards relationships at all. Like that is not my real house. But I have friends that you know, I, I try to give them, like, my, I guess, advice or opinion, even though I'm single, so I probably shouldn't, but it's, I, I try to explain to them, like, don't allow this person to change everything about your life, you know, like, don't give up your gem membership or change the way you're eating or, like, any of this stuff, unless it's better like maybe they're encouraging you to work out but like if you're giving up like the hobbies you like to do hanging out with your girlfriends like that's unhealthy 
you, you know, know it's a problem it's, yeah it's definitely, and it's going to become a problem down the road yeah it's yeah. going to be a huge problem so holding on to your identity if you're with someone and this is just again my personal opinion because i am single so take what i say with a grain of salt but if a person doesn't want you to hang out with your friends that's a problem if a person doesn't want you to go do things like maybe you like you know, go into an art class once a week or once a month. If they don't want you to do that, that's a problem. You know, and okay, so big problem. <laughs> yeah. So, so being aware of that. Yeah, yeah. So, I think um, like awareness is the best thing. So, once a person is aware of their attachment style and their partner's attachment style, that's how they can start to work towards a secure yes. relationship. Yes, and if you, for example, know that you have, like, if you realize that you are more like an avoidant spectrum, um, one of the things that you could do is you could, like, work on your approaching, mm -hmm. approaching others. Mm -hmm. uh, because what people don't realize, like, avoidant person, they seem, like, invulnerable. Mm -hmm. And they think that they're invul invulnerable, like, they fully believe that. Mm -hmm. um, but what's happening is that they are, so like they're unaware of their need and desire for connection, but it's down there mm -hmm. because we are wired for we are wired for relating and for connection. Mm -hmm. um, so for them, it's actually a huge risk mm -hmm. to approach someone, um, and uh, and so for them, like I would encourage them to to approach, 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 mm -hmm. and um, and also surround themselves with secure people as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And that could come, you know, as friends, it could come as, you know, as a coach, as a therapist, like whatever, however you um, choose to, to work on that. Mm -hmm. um, but absolutely, like that could be one of the, one of the ways, because the more we are relating securely, the more we also, um, we are rewiring ourselves for being more secure. Mm -hmm. And then we're leading others, like we are helping others. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of like like it's kind of like about leadership that is super exciting for me too, mm -hmm. um, and it's not just about relationships. Um, it shows up in business and career big time, right? Because um, the secure relating, it's it's it, these are sustainable relationships. Mm -hmm. um, so these are clients for life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if you're like on a void and spectrum, and you are passionate about your work, but in for example, relationships with clients, you're kind of like subtly trying to create distance. Um, that's not good for, for your mission, right? So that is like in every area of your life, uh, like this really is incredibly valuable um, tools and information to have. So yeah. Yeah, I agree. I 100% agree. So I want to touch on something that you said about and I feel like it's, it's pretty prevalent in women to not be able to accept a compliment. Mm -hmm. And I, I was on a webinar with a, a local coach, actually. Do you know Liz? Um, Liz? Okay, anyway, I, I, think, <laughs> I don't know where her last name is. Liz Lopez? Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> she, was, she was saying how it's really common for women. Like, if you say, oh, I like your nails, she, like, a woman will say, like, oh, I need to get a fill. And it's almost like, like, putting down the compliment, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so instead of just saying, oh, thanks, girl, you know? Yeah. Like, they, they're like, oh, I need to get a fill. Oh, I didn't really like this color. So I think that, and we spoke about this a little bit before yeah. we started airing, that, like, we need to own our, like, uniqueness, our, our beauty, our sexuality, our femininity. We need to own it, and we need to embrace it in ourselves and in other women and be open like I love giving women compliments and, I, and I'm sure it makes some some women uncomfortable but I'm going to keep doing it because I want women to be able to be like you know what I am beautiful just how you said like yes. I am beautiful yes, I am fierce today like <laughs> that's we, right we need yeah. more of that we, we do. need more of oh that. my god we really need more of that mm -hmm. and I'm with you I'm on a mission to change this culture mm -hmm. um, like women have for so long um kind of like related to each other is this negative in a negative way mm -hmm. um, to where like I would rather talk to you about everything I hate about my body mm -hmm. and everything that's going wrong in my life because then you're not going to get jealous mm -hmm. and you're not going to be threatened by me mm -hmm. 
and uh, to where I say like, okay, that's enough of that. Um, because we are just perpetuating this, uh, talking about abundance, right? Like, the more we focus in on everything we hate about ourselves and we hate about our life, mm -hmm. the more we create probably more of that or the, exactly. mo the more we stay stuck. Mm -hmm. um, and I say, like, we need to celebrate each other more mm -hmm. because your beauty is so unique. Like, I am not threatened by your beauty because there is enough beauty by, like, for everyone. Mm -hmm. And your beauty is such a unique flavor that is, like, my beauty is a completely different flavor. Mm -hmm. Like, this is beautiful. Like, let's yeah. make a cocktail. Let's um, celebrate each other. Mm -hmm. And there is enough to, to go around. Yeah. The, the way I like to explain that is if you have a candle that's, like, the flame is lit, it doesn't put out that flame to light another one. Yeah. So it's like we, we can love and embrace each other and, and gush over each other's beauty. It doesn't take away from yours. It doesn't and diminish successes. it. And successes. And yes. yeah. it's yes. I think it's so important to celebrate friends' successes. And I know, just like you said, um, there, there was something you said about, like, so this person isn't threatened. Like, I have a friend that's like, oh, I'm just going to... I feel like she was going to, like, the Bahamas or something, like, on a cruise. She's like, oh, it's just the Bahamas. I'm like, just the Bahamas? <laughs> like, do you know how many Bahamas. people wish they could go to the Bahamas right, right? now? You know, so don't put yeah. yourself down to make yeah. other people comfortable. Don't dull your shine to make other people comfortable. We have to embrace each other, celebrate each other. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. And a beautiful thing that... Um, the more I have women in my circle that do celebrate me and celebrate themselves, the more I feel like I have permission to, to actually share myself authentically yeah. and to be myself and to shine. Yes. And, um, and we all benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Like our world benefits from it. <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> so, okay, so you, you deal with how many people come to you like percentage wise? that are coming to you for like sex related stuff. Because I feel, I know I, I did one interview with a Tantra or Tantra um, educator, and but I, I feel like it's something I want to explore more because there's so many women who are not pleased or comfortable in their sexuality and they don't talk about it. Yes. So like what, what is the percentage of people that you deal with when it's, when it's like intimacy related? Yes, majority of my clients oh, really? are, yes, they want help around area of sexuality and feeling more confident in their body mm -hmm. and um, in their relationship mm -hmm. with their husband's partners. Yeah, so we'll have to get you back on and, and like talk about that. Because I mean, I think like there's a percentage of women that have never like had an orgasm or like even like a vaginal orgasm or just like so many different things because and I, I think even though it's like physical it's mental and emotional allowing yourself to open up and just be vulnerable I think vulnerability is a huge part of it and absolutely. I mean I'm sure I'm sure that's like a whole nother topic <laughs> we're, we're not gonna the next get one. it yeah <laughs> absolutely oh my god yes yeah, we'll have to do a follow-up and and dive deep into that because I, I want to help I want to help women thrive, you know, there's, I feel like there's a whole nother level of life and pleasure and joy and yumminess that, that we haven't even tapped into. Yes, yes, there is always another level <laughs> and, and I am like on your team, helping women thrive yeah. and helping everybody thrive because a woman thriving, like by thriving, we always bring everybody else up, yes. right? Yes. So um, yes, we are. Be on the same mission. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, a happy woman, what, what did I say? A happy wife is a happy life. So when the women are thriving, it's helping the men out too. So oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. They're happy. As long as a woman's happy, the man is happy. So, okay, before we wrap this up, what are your top three tips for living an abundant life? Yes. Um, I would say surround yourself with people that um, are going to cheer you on yes. and are going to celebrate you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, remember that, um, like, I love this, that if you fail, remember that successful people fail more times than unsuccessful people try. Yeah. 
Yes, I love that. Third tip, and I love this one because it's completely independent on anyone or anything, is love yourself and celebrate yourself every single day. Yes. Find things to celebrate every single day. So, yes. yeah. I love it, I love it. Yes, celebrate yourself every single day. <laughs> It's so important. We we have to. We have to. But but do it. I, I just want to say like do it for you and not for social media. I want to add that because I think it's really important that we feel good rather than post about feeling good. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I I love gratitude journals. So that's one really amazing way to celebrate yourself is at the end of the day write down ten things you're grateful for and. Yeah, just gratitude, I feel like, is a huge component of living an abundant life, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us, and tell everyone how to find you online. Yeah. Um, the best way to connect with me is on Facebook, mm -hmm. so just um, find Natalia Rising, and uh, yeah, send me a message or like my post. Yeah, and, um, yeah. Let's Do you want to spell it? So I'll have it in the show notes, but can you spell it out for them, for people listening on iTunes? Yes. It's um, Natalia, M-A-T-A-L-I-A, Rising, R-I-S-I-N-G. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, m and until next time, love and light. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Abundance Hack Show. I would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and questions and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our yummy episodes. Every time you leave a five-star rating or review, I do my happy dance. <laughs>